Hi, my name is Jacob Smith, Solution Architect Manager at Nasuni. There's no shortage of ways to move files to Azure, and in fact, deciding on which technology to use can be overwhelming. The focus of this presentation will be to share some design considerations when evaluating the two most popular solutions, Microsoft Azure Files and the Nasuni File Storage Platform. Azure Files is a Microsoft native cloud file storage solution designed for small to medium-sized customers who do not have a lot of file data and a limited number of sites. In our example here, we have a customer who has an on-premises file server called File Server 1, where users are writing and reading data from the folder called Share. The users on that Share appreciate their local file experience, with most file transactions taking less than one millisecond. For this business to use Azure Files, their data would need to be moved off of the Windows File Server and into an Azure File Share, where users would then consume their files over the internet from an Azure region. Since this region is outside of the customer's environment, the user's file latency would increase by 10 to 30x. This means that all reads and writes have the possibility of being 30 times slower since the file services are not local to the users. In addition to the added latency, an Azure file storage account is limited to growing beyond 100 terabytes under LRS or ZRS redundancy. Customers that need to use geographic redundancy are limited to just five terabytes. In the prior example, if the source file server was 250 terabytes in size, this customer would be unable to use a single Azure file storage account. Instead, they would be required to break their source volume into, at a minimum, three different Azure file storage accounts to store the data. Furthermore, since each volume has a unique folder pathing, the users would need to go to three different locations to get their data that used to reside in a single volume, increasing complexity and management overhead for both the users and the operational administrators. I like to ask my customers to think about how would they break their current file system into three different slices in order to accommodate an architectural limitation that you might find in your destination platform. It's a very difficult challenge to address um, even harder to train the users how to do that. Furthermore, if we look at the back end of Azure Files, these individual volumes are limited to a 200 snapshot limit. And snapshots on the Azure side are the native solution often referred to as Azure Backup. The scheduling of snapshots would be on a per volume basis and restores would only be available inside the context of a single volume where the snapshot originated. As you can see, this solution is complex once you start to introduce lots of files and data. A few items which you didn't show on the whiteboard is that Azure Files does not provide compression or deduplication. You don't get any of that reduction when you use Azure Files. There's no native antivirus or multi-cloud functionality. This is an Azure exclusive service. While Azure Blob provides almost unlimited scale for objects, and is something that we really use a lot here at Nasuni, it is the Azure Files service that necessitates all the limitations which we've discussed. Now onto Azure Files Sync, which is a Windows Server plugin, which can help address some of the challenges when using Azure File. The Azure Files Sync agent is installed on a Windows Server to enable edge caching for a single Azure File Share. A single Azure File Sync server cannot be used to connect to multiple Azure File Shares. Keep this in mind as we continue to build out this architecture. Using our previous example, this customer has decided to deploy an Azure File Sync server called AZ Sync One and is presenting the share locally from that server. Additional sites can be added by connecting them to the same sync group inside of Azure, enabling the availability of a single Azure file share to connect to multiple sites. However, what we discovered in the previous slide is that this customer has more than 100 terabytes of data and therefore must break their data up across multiple volumes. And since Azure File Sync can only connect to a single volume, this will necessitate the need for many Windows file servers to enable edge caching for multiple sites and customers with large data sets. This further complicates things for users and admins because now there will be even more file paths for accessing data as opposed to where it used to live on a single namespace on their prior solution. In this example, a multi-site use case with just 300 terabytes of data can easily drive four plus full installations of Windows Server to support access. It isn't uncommon for a large customer considering Azure File Sync to see requirements that contain hundreds of standalone Windows servers to support the one-to-one -one relationship between an Azure File Share and the Azure File Sync plugin. Again, these limitations may not pose issues for smaller organizations that don't have much data and a smaller number of users and offices. If you want more of an enterprise cloud file storage solution that is very cost-effective yet can scale to nearly any limit and is super easy to manage, I'm going to talk to you about Nasuni and how we accomplish that with Azure Blob.
By consolidating legacy file infrastructure and modernizing with Nasuni, our customers generally lower their costs by 50% or more, reduce their infrastructure footprint by up to 80%, and spend up to 60% less time administering their file infrastructure. By using the most cost-effective tiers of Azure Blob without any additional components, a single Nasuni volume can grow infinitely, and this is what provides the scale that our enterprise customers need. The other thing that Nasuni does is we compress and deduplicate all data before we write it to the Azure Blob. Our lightweight edge appliances provide the fast file access that customers demand of the data that lives in Azure Blob. These run on-premises or in the cloud and can be sized to meet your needs. Typically, the cache required on-premises is 2 to 5% of the backend data. So a customer with 100 terabytes of data can easily provide that file system with 2 terabytes of on-prem cache. These are flexible and can be sized up and sized down depending on your requirements. These VMs can be recovered in 15 minutes, not servers that you need to patch and maintain like Windows servers. Instead, they are managed from the Nasuni Management Console. From the NMC, you can apply updates which keep them on the latest code for our software and the underlying operating system. Our cloud-native file system scales to the demands of enterprise customers while also maintaining compression and deduplication across all of the sites. So adding additional sites is simple. Just deploy additional Nasuni managed Linux VMs and upload the data to the existing Azure blob, and we will compress and dedupe and store that in this single volume. And this can continue for any number of sites and any amount of data. And our immutable snapshots with continuous file versioning will ensure that any of those sites can be recovered quickly, whether it's a deletion or ransomware event, we can recover your files in minutes. In addition to all the benefits that I've already mentioned, Nasuni provides a ton of additional value via our multi-site file sync and global file locking so that we can deliver file locking regardless of the amount of sites or where those users are sitting. Our ability to rapidly recover from ransomware is unparalleled in the industry. Use your object storage and the cloud of your choice. There is no lock-in with the Nasuni platform. And lastly, we provide a single point of administration via the Nasuni Management Console, which enables you to control all components of the Nasuni platform from one single place. Thank you for watching. Please reach out to us here at Nasuni or visit nasuni.com if you'd like to learn more.